Hello, everyone. Uh, really great to be here. It's been a great night. And I'm going to talk to you today about games, just a little bit about games. So I start with this statistic because it's pretty remarkable, right? 97% of the kids in our country, in the US, are playing video games between the ages of 8 and 18. And it turns out, it turns out that in some of these games, some kids are doing really remarkable things. And I'm going to show you what kinds of things they're doing. We're going to talk about two games today, right? While this is happening with kids in games, that they're so engrossed in games, this is also true. 50% of our kids in the US, especially in urban areas, are dropping out of school. We live in a city right now where this is, where this is the deal. 50% of our kids leave school, right? And so, um, I, and this is my reality. This is what keeps me up at night, um, every night. Um, I used to be a school teacher and then a school principal and became a games researcher to, to, to really explore what is it about games that, that is so enticing, right? So what is it about games, right? What is it about games that makes these games so enticing? And what is it about games that might give rise, that uh, allow for the emergence of something potentially really powerful, right? So let's go inside of games. We're going to take you inside of games. So games are like these sort of vessels, right? They have, they're, they're these kinds of, um, they're kind of containers, right? And there's stuff inside of them that make them work. So let's go, let's have a look inside. So one of the things that we know, if we know games, right, games are made up of rules. Games are also made up of game mechanics. And these things together begin to govern our behavior in a game. So that if I'm playing tennis, in a game of tennis, and I'm serving first, I have to hit the ball to that service court over there. And the reason I do that is because I've stepped into this place called tennis, and suddenly I and being governed by a set of rules, right, that govern these, uh, these dynamics. Games also, really good games, define player identity. So in some games, you might be asked to take on the role of a biochemist. Sometimes you may be asked to um, take on the role of an investigative reporter. We're going to see both of those roles play out in games that we're going to see tonight. And games also within the games give you a set of tools. And these tools are given to you so that you can solve complex problems within the games. You have an artillery of things that you use within the games to, to, uh, to solve problems. So what, if we know anything about systems, what happens in systems is that they give rise to certain things. Conditions rise out of systems, right? So let's look at the conditions that rise out of, um, out of games. And we believe that these are the things that make them so enticing. So one thing that, that they give rise to is a sense of relevance. You know why you're doing what you're doing in games. There's also um, embodied action. Like you actually take action to like make things happen in a game. Um, there's social interplay. So games are highly social. G game, games give rise to emotions, right? So there is an emotional endeavor. It's an emotional engagement when you're playing games. And also a sense of place. Games uh, tend to be very uh, context specific. We're going to look at this game, Atlantis Remix. This game, um, in this game, they ask players to take on a particular role of an investigative reporter. And so it's a literacy-based game. This is for middle schools. There are tens of thousands of kids playing this game. This is a game that we fund where I work at the Gates Foundation. They designed science and math games. But we're going to look at a writing game. This game is based on the novel um, by Mary Shelley, Frankenstein. And so we, don't, we no longer just read the novel, but we're also going to step into the world of the novel that these guys have created. And the investigative reporter, the player, has to go into the game and investigate. The, the, the challenge that the player has is that the player has to write an investigative persuasive article for a newspaper. The town has asked the player if, they, if the player would please write this investigative report to uh, help the town determine whether the scientist, this local doctor in the town, um, should be at the cemetery collecting body parts to build a monster. Right? So um, one of the things that we have to do to write uh, 
a persuasive essay is to collect data. So the player goes about the game interacting with other players, collecting evidence to build an argument as to whether the, 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 science, the, the doctor in the town should be building Frankenstein. So essentially, we're interested in creating these kinds of highly immersive systems that give a real sense of relevance for kids, right? So that school looks more like this, where, and, and it doesn't just have to be school. It could be outside of school, too. How might we create learning environments that look more like this and less like this, where kids are telling us that they're completely alienated from the experience, they f it feels completely irrelevant. We want to create experiences where kids are taking on these kinds of roles, where they're actually being given the opportunity to solve a complex problem, right? And so in one game, this, it, it, there's this one game folded that does just that. Now this is completely, completely remarkable, right? This happened just this last week. On Sunday, there was an article published just this week in, in the Nature Journal, the most widely cited journal in the world, that a group of gamers solved a problem that had been vexing scientists for 15 years. They figured out the protein structure of an enzyme that causes AIDS. Here's to solve real-world scientific puzzles. And we're not talking simple stuff here. They tackle big things like Alzheimer's and cancer research. Just this week, a team playing on the application unlocked the structure of an enzyme that could lead to an AIDS-fighting protein. So it seems to me that if games are creating the conditions where kids can do this kind of stuff, we should be looking at games very, very seriously to see if we can transform learning in the 21st century so that we can enable kids to do the very remarkable. Thank you very much.